Hello and um, welcome to this um, crash course. Uh, what we're going to be doing now today is to build out this fantastic looking application, right? And um, it's actually a full stack application. So we're going to start up, you know, by building the UIs first. Like I'll build out the landing page, which is the home page, then go over to the shop and so on, right? So then we'll start the actual implementation of this application from the back end, right? So, so far, this is how far we've come. I'm going to show you, demo it to you, what we have currently. You can access it via this link. And this is it. This is what we have. Looking good. This is the arrow section. So, scroll down. You basically have the range section. So scroll down a bit. You have the product section. So, when you over a product, you kind of see that cool, let's see, you know, effect that we have there. Right? So, that's actually done with Fibra Motion. Kind of um, basic. And also, we have this, um, you know, this setup section right and then we have the footer right so this is good and then you can check out the shop part by clicking on the shop button so this should take you to a page where you can view more of those products so don't worry most of this product will actually be coming from the actual endpoint right you can see show here you can actually sh you know select what whatever you want to show and so on you can select a filter that you want to filter by Right, so these are the things that will basically like integrate with an actual pay, um, an actual endpoint in the future. So you can see we have more of the products here because this is more of a product page, and then we can have a custom navigation, right? So if you click on it, it takes you to the other page, right? So, but the way we want to do it during the integration, we want to make sure that it doesn't reload the page, it just you know fetches new data and update the virtual DOM um, instantaneously. And also we have the banner section here and then we have the footer so this is what we'll be building in the in this very first uh, module of the application and then yes i would actually love to hear you guys and um, feedback regarding um you know what and what you want to be uh, you want integrated in this platform right because i've already like demoed a couple of things that has to do with the backend architecture and so on so these are the things that we'll be going through um during this lesson right so um all right so all right, so yeah, so let's grab the mobile version of this. I forgot to demo this, it like minimizes a bit. And obviously, just take us back to um, the initial stage, which is this. Good, good, good. So I'm going to do, just going to demo it here. Okay, so put it around here. And you can see this is our navigation. Very good. And then scroll down, you can see the way that of the component is pretty much responsive. We still have all the cool features within it. And all the details are still there. And then we have the footer. So this is the mobile version of this application, right? All right, so let's get um, let's get started. Okay, it seems we are live again. And I've basically done some setup here. I think I've not touched base on. All right, so we have a way for us to be able to connect so you know to mongodb and what we're doing here primarily is the we're using the mogus as a kind of a connection point between what we have locally as our database and you know connecting with the actual application so everything within here is actually within the um, the gis framework so um, i had to basically make a decision that um, if you're building both the client and the server, we just you know we can just keep it JS. Yes. All right, so yeah, so basically have this, and what we have to do now is add this file, and what it does by default is if there is an active connection, it just basically uses that connection, so it doesn't spin up a new connection every time. Uh, we're using a a, um, a program pattern referred to as singleton to basically um, approach that. And if we have a cached version, we return this and we use that um, cached version to subsequently connect um, to the database. All right, so what we're going to do now is to create a kind of instance and we could call it anything, right? So we're going to call this one um, slash, um, let's call this funero. Okay, that's the name of the project, uh, funero right here. So call this for the and then we'll just connect. It's as simple as that. So if you don't have MongoDB Compass, you could, you know, you could just go over to, let's do MongoDB Compass. 
here right here so if you click on this it should give you um it should give you a download option for you to be able to download for your operating system and yeah so that just works that's all you need you click on this download now so i think you should just start to download automatically or takes you to a page where you know you can select you know your version your platform and so on so here i'm just going to select windows right well if you're using linux or debian or whatever um, the distro you're using you can just pick it up here right so that would be your uh, uh what's it called that would, that would be your, your platform and also you can select a package right if you want the msi representation or zip so this is actually platform um dependent um so let's for example let's select linux you can see we have a tgz so this is actually how you go about it you select whatever you want in my case it's just um, it's just windows and i'm looking for windows and go to maybe i just need M msi so i just click on this download button and when i do that it's going to start downloading i already have it i'm just going to pause this one and remove it so yeah so this is exactly how you set up and you should have the mogul um, db compass installed so when you have a, a compass installed like this it's going to obviously open up to a kind of assistant i'm going to put this one real quick it's going to open up a dialog that looks like this with nothing you're not going to have anything by the you know by the way you're not going to have any connection what you need to do is to click, click on this new connection button and you're going to have something like this so here we're going to you know create the one we talked about just now slash for neuron and one other thing that we need to do is to save and connect don't just click on connect click on connect is not going to save it here so you have to click on save and connect so once we have that you're going to choose like a color or whatever you want to name it so let's click on maybe this blue one and we're going to call i think we have lots of blue ones let's click on something red all right that's nice so let's call this uh, phone db so this would be our phone road db and we'll just save and connect so when i click on that you can see we have the color panel coming up clearly and if you take a look at you know maybe i decide to disconnect now you can see we have phone road db all in red makes sense so this will allow you to connect subsequently so but one thing that we do need is we need a connection string you can click on here and just copy the connection string right here and what we're going to do we're going to go to our env we're just going to create a dot env and we're going to put that as our db so by default in here we are expecting mongo db underscore url the same thing we're going to put in here so what i normally recommend is when you're doing things like this you should you know you should always cater for edge cases right so what, what if a new developer is coming to the platform you don't have access to the env and most of the time you know it's always in the um in, in git no so it's not always showing right so we normally add env sample right so we can do env sample right here and this one will have something that the env already have but it does but it do not contain the actual value right so okay that so yeah so um future developers will know that oh we have to put in a kind of a mongodb url here they can figure out you know the kind of url they want to use either use the one from mongodb compress or they use a live uh, mongodb, uh, mongodb url okay so i think that was able to basically explain it and with that now we can be able to set up our connection and now we can be able to connect to db and use it subsequently within our server actions so as i mentioned before we're actually taking the route of js we are not really going into uh, critical areas like you know trying to use a different um, language or whatever right so we'll just stay with what we have okay so now we have a route right even before we worry about the route there's always something called validations so this validation is actually responsible, you know, for keeping track of how the schema will look like, right? So now, while we are doing this, we can go to our models. I just showed you this so you have an idea of how the, how the schema looks like. Maybe I'll just copy this. Then go to our models. I've created a model here. Go to source. Go to library. And go to database. Then we have our models right here. So models we have billing.model.ts click on that 
and we need to basically create our model we don't have anything here so this is the way our schema looks like i'm just going to copy you know comment out everything so we're going to simulate all of this right so we have email we have email somewhere here so that's fine and we need to basically use like first name last name and so on so let's let's think about this right so rather okay so let's do let's copy this paste it in here so the first thing there is the first name it is going to be the first name of obviously whoever is making the um whoever is trying to book right so it's going to be a string it's going to be required and it's not unique right so we can take that off and okay so what else do we do last name same thing is required okay what else do we do company well it's optional if you have a company if you don't it's completely optional so in order for us to be explicit i just do required force so by default require is set to force by the okay so we have the first name we have the last name we have the company so i think we'll worry about the country street town and so on okay is the country required yeah it's required it's also with the street town uh, province so every other thing is required as a matter of fact yeah except additional info <laughs> okay all right so let's see that additional info is not required company is not required our country is required okay this is the same thing for street and then we have the town And we have the province, okay. and we have the zip code. Zip code, and then we have the phone somehow, right? So make everything in string format, which is fine. Phone. right so i think that's basically it that's everything that is needed and one advantage of this is the, is the fact that you can use the same validation schema for both your backend architecture or your backend layer as well as the client layer right so when you're validating the form you use the same you know um, validation to to do that right the same validation here okay so this is just us defining the model and how our model will look like and we've added the timestamp option here so what this does by default is that it allows you to be able to add the created art as well as the updated art field to your model so you don't need to you know specify them manually okay so here we basically define the model itself so we could just do billing right and this will just be you know i like to do things this way right so let's do billing model so it's more explicit Okay. so yeah so we should be able to like you know um, you know see oh this is a billing model or whatever you want to call it right so uh, yeah so I kind of feel we could uh, what well, it depends it depends so we could keep it like this which is fine and next thing we do is that we can actually use this within our actual um, server actions. Um, so if, if you're asking where are the server actions, right? So the server actions are actually under the library folder Then we have the actions, right? And then I've defined a billing TS. So I just added this newly and this action will be responsible in making kind of read write uh, of this operation to the DB and what we basically need to put in here can be the input that we are expected right? So we can come here and do input and this input is going to be, you know, um, the validation input that we've already defined. That is all of this input. So that's first name, launch name, and so on. So um, while we do that, we could go to um, <clears throat> our models. 
go to models and then we have an input like this right so we have something like this so ideally i always like to do this so i'm going to do export so i'm going to do interface and there. so this allows you to define a type of what is actually like expected in here so you can use this type um, you know anywhere so ideally you could do it like this or you could just do clear oh sorry oops okay so declare and the first thing will be the first thing okay okay so declare first name hmm okay so i don't know is there any point so we're using declare we could use just the way it is okay if i ever look then it's like same same pattern all right yeah so everything is like the same pattern everywhere it's a company Country street town province Okay, sorry. Is it put phone email? <coughs> Alright, so fun email and then the additional additional info right here. Okay, so yeah, so that's basically all the different um, the different types that we're having. So then you can use this one subsequently in you know in here, right? So so the body can actually be type of of you know of that particular input. And, you know something like this so let's import that right so there's no password so it's now validated and we could just use you know everything that we're using so but in this case we might not really be needing anything from the um, from the body itself because we are sending everything in and we want to validate to make sure that everything is correct so if it's not you know if the input are not valid it returns the input validation error uh, so with a message of um, validation failed status code of 400 and so on so we've I basically like created a wrapper you know that will help us to you know convey this message to the client so what it does is basically returns a meta and the data field meta basically contain if it's successful or not and then returns the actual message uh, but the data basically you know just returns null if it doesn't contain any data in the case of error but in the case of success it returns the actual in the response from the endpoint okay so i think with that we've you know really covered what's important and if it's not validated like this we're going to have this and call this below and save info we're passing in the entire input validation i think right so let's see if that works okay so info addition just returns true or false though but <laughs> yeah we're passing in the body right passing the body because we're not doing any form of transformation so yeah so that, that works okay so yeah we're passing the billing here so if it's successful we just do 201 and boom we're ready to go okay so um i think with that we've you know we've really covered what's important and the next thing is we need to be able to connect this to the actual action which we've done here save building info and i'm just going to go in here it's still save building info is not doing anything and the input is going to be a billing nice so that's that's gonna be our input 
and what we're going to do we're going to just do billing is equal to uh output out and the name for model is billing model do insert out of create should have a create attribute isn't it yeah, yeah it does Yeah, so we pass the input in and we just return the Simple as that, right? Right, so what we do, we connect to the DB, we create an instance of the billing model and then we return it. Basic, right? So small, you know, it's as simple as that. And one thing, you know, one way we're going to like figure out if this works is we have to basically connect our client to this endpoint. We don't have an endpoint yet. Let's go to the route. And we already have an endpoint in slash billing is a post request and it runs all of this. So now we need a way to be able to communicate, you know, with the, uh, you know, we need a way for the client to be able to communicate with the server. So now we need a kind of a layer, a service. And now we're going to call that the, um, the API service. So the API service will, will be responsible in making calls to the actual backend that we are having. And we're going to just be using fetch for now, right? So it's, it's pretty straightforward, should be a big headache. So some people like to use Azios. I'd like to use Azios for a large scale application, really. But now we'll just use, use this fetch for the scope of these studies. Okay, so now that we have that, we are going to go over the um, the client and the way this works is we want a way you know to you know to have this up and running and one way that we do that originally is we can go to check our billing form you can see the form schema is now extending from the billing info input validation and what we have to do here is when we are submitting we have to call the endpoint. So on submit, we need the data, right? So I can put it here, right? So someone would need the data, and this data then we are going to, you know, say if it's successful or not. So what we're going to do const response is equal to maybe I can. Improve this font a bit so for you guys to see it properly. And I can do uh, this is going to be an async function. Okay, so we're going to do make big API cloud service. And we're going to pass in the URL. So in our case, it's actually uh, slash API slash billing, right? So let's see how we. Kind of, you know. Oh, slash API. All oh, right, that's fine. Okay, let's go back to where we have it. Okay, so we we'll over over here. Let's see what what else we need. We need the options. Options is the request option. Let's see what option contains. What is the method and then the body? Nice. So method, how method is going to be pushed? And then the body is just going to be this data. So yeah, so that would be our response. So what we'll do now is we're just going to log out your response. Okay, so we'll log out the response like so. Okay, so let's try this out if this uh, if this works. Right, so we're going to okay, let's restart our server, make sure everything is alright. So um uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier, I think I was not able to pass that information across to you guys. Um but the thing I basically did was to make sure I you know 
I went into the moguls.ts and changed this DB name to Fonero. And this kind of gives us you know enough privilege to be able to know, oh we're defining Fonero as the as the database name, right? So yeah, so this would be the database name and any models that we are having. Uh, maybe for example we have the billing done models or whatever we we give it the here that name is going to be billing model so that name you know is what we are going to be you know what we are going to be having here with the inclusion of s by default all right so yeah so that means when we save an entry we are going to be able to have this i saved one entry and i have this so let me try to save a new a new entry all right so yeah so i'll just click on save billing info I have a toast here, so billing information says successfully, boom, this is actually saved in a DB now. So when I come in here and I refresh this, I'm going to basically have like more entries, right? I think I have like four before, but now I'm having like, you know, five, right? So let's add another one, save, boom, another one, save. So what we should be having now should be six. So let's refresh, six, nice. So we just added one, right? So this is the one we just added. So that, yeah, so that, that makes sense, you know, um, judging from the way it should be. And the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to be able to add a loading state because we just click on this and boom, something happened. We don't really like keep track of the loading state. So for us to be able to keep track of the loading state, we're going to go to check how billing form. And I've already defined a state here, um, set loading state. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that that one, you know, is active, right, for the most part. So I'm going to come in here and set the loading state to true. So whenever we have like, you know, Whenever we have like a response, we set it to, to, to false, right? So I'm just going to make this enable for the most part. So we have results. So if it's so if we have a successful result, we make sure that it's no longer you know um, loading. And if we have a catch, so you come in here and we do dot catch, and we're going to just specify the error right there. And we want to make sure that the loading state is indeed false, right? So uh, we don't need all of this just. So if it fails, we're going to be able to, our make API call service is going to throw a toast and tell us that it has failed, right? So yeah, with it, we can be able to maintain the, you know, the loading state of, of the, you know, when we're making API calls, right? So yeah, so now we can actually test this out to see if it works. And we're just going to save billing. Okay, so let's refresh this. And okay, so let's like a few of this information. Okay, we don't have the loading. Oh, that's true. Because in the button we are using, Okay, so um, yeah, so we, we need to be able to make this button to be aware, you know, that we are having a loading state, right? So yeah, so this is the button, and does the button have a loading state? Is load loading? Does it have? I doubt. Uh, let's see where this button is coming from. It's coming from components UI button. Hmm. Okay, so we're supposed to actually just bring out. In our own button it's always in the common for the most part yeah we're supposed to use main button so we're using the main button here main button okay so we can actually say oh the type is this and that and it's loading yeah so you're gonna do Okay, so yeah, the type or the title or the text, yeah, it's called text. So save building information will be the text. Okay. Um all right. Yeah, so I think that is that. So the type is not really like type type type. But um, let me see if it's submittable. Oh, it's submittable, so we don't need to like put it. So it's actually a custom button I've already created. It's actually available in the in the common folder, right? So you have the main button there, right? So all right, so let's try this out again. So you can see this is actually much more blended to 
to the kind of button that we want for the most we can reduce the whatever whatever if we want but i think it's it's really cool right really cool so that's the div and we want to be able to take this up a bit i just do my top six Okay, so empty six that should work. Well, just refresh it in case it doesn't. Uh, okay, yeah, so that should just work at least for the most part. Okay, so um, while we are not worrying much, let's fill all this information. Save, boom, it's saving, boom, successful. Then it's not. So, yeah, one other thing we're going to do is to obviously, you know, uh, so we'll save the information like this, right we can as well just say oh okay let's place it to the order or whatever right so we'll keep the same information for the user so the thing is we can choose to save all of this information in you know in our local storage at least for this user so that when the user comes it doesn't need to you know to be putting all of this here every now and then right so we can actually just save the entry so whatever we do here we can use it to save the entry into you know, into the DB. Uh, so yeah, we can have the local entry saved. So whether we are doing the response, maybe yeah, keep it. And I'm just going to so here we are having the results. So maybe we can just let go of all of this. And where we're having the response, so we can just like cancel a lot of response, right? So we want to check if we can extract the ID from it, right? So ID, we can, you know, put it in the local store and subsequently use it to fetch the billing information, right? So um, let's, let's try a new one. The point of this is, is for us not to be able to, you know, um, yeah, be creating the same, um, what's it called, billing information like every time. So we have to like regulate it. Right, so let's let's do this. Okay, so save, it's loading, boom. Oh, I don't have this stuff opened up. Console, boom. Then there we go. Let's go to console again. We have the object. So we have the response. We have the data, and then we have GID. Right. So if there is actually an ID there, so we need to be able to like create um, some sort of um, a server action be able to update an existing you know an existing uh mozy code an existing billing information so we can save this local storage wise and we're going to use jota and we're going to like persist it instead so we've already done this before i don't know if you remember but if if you don't i'm just going to save so here i'm going to go in a note save id into Yeah, into local storage. Okay, so ideally, what we are doing here, we are just persisting the state. So I'm just going to persist the state. So yeah, so for anything that has to do with you know the persistence of state, um, there's something I've I've done before regarding how we use um, Jotai to regulate that. So if you remember, you know we already have a checkout item. So I'm just going to show you guys that. Go to, I go to application, right, and go to local storage here, and in here I'm going to show you we have cart items, right. So we are persisting this guy with Jotai, right. So Jotai is actually responsible in managing that state for us. I'm going to search for what we're using this. So we have cart item, atom with storage, right, and we have the key. Nice. So I can come in here. And I'm going to call this um, billing billing ID, right? So yeah, so a billing ID we could fetch. Well, I think we can do this in two ways. Well, we can save the entire billing information in there, right? And yes, I think it's better. So we're going to call this billing item, and in here we're going to call billing. Okay, so just billing item. It's not an array, but I think it's this. 
an object for the most part. So, so the type is actually okay. So we need to be able to give it a type. Yeah, I think we have I billing somewhere. Okay, so I billing, so that's billing item. So we can actually be able to use this billing atom wherever we want to. So let's see how it's been used somewhere we've used it before. So you can see the way we're using it. So cut value, use atom value, we use it. So we can set the state as well. Uh, we're going to look for where we are setting some of the states. And yeah, there we go. Use that term like this. We are setting it here. Boom. Very simple. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to here. And when we make a call like this, we're going to save it. Okay. So we're going to just... So if, if we are not using the value, fine. But I think we're using both the um, billing info information, billing info and set this could be anything you know this could be anything you want but make it as descriptive so that whenever you're using it it's easier for you to you know for you to pick up okay so yeah so this is not going to be cat atom but billing atom okay so yeah you can use this one to set the state and meanwhile the state we are setting is actually straight into response we have to get it right Cancel log response dot response dot data. I'm just curious. Let's see if that's how we are getting the information. So use atom is undefined. That means we are not importing it for some reason. So let's import it. Use atom from Jotai. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So you can actually just be null, right? So you could do something like this or null. No. So if it does not have a value, it's best put as null. Okay, so that's I billing or null. Okay, let's go there. Let's go here. So we're setting billing information somewhere, right? So mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so it's unknown, so it's fine. So let's let's check it out. Okay, boom. I think we have it. So here it gives us all the all different information for the billing. So all we have to do is to just set the state and we should be good to go. So we're going to come here and do something like, you know. So we're going to pass all of this inside. Right. So um, we should have a state that basically like manages all of this. So we have like a general state that manages it, right? So um, most of the responses we're getting, we could just create a, you know, a instant manager for it, right? So let's look for a configuration file. Let's say that should be under types, source types index the .ts, interface. So we're gonna just have like a global class that manages it. So we're going to have a response, and this is going to have data, and this could be actually anything, so it's fine. It's a global class after all. So yeah, so we could use this one to subsequently manage, you know, um, our responses, right? So we can pass that in here, and this response already has a response, it has a data field, right? So which, which makes sense, right? So um, let's say... Okay. Hmm. Okay. So types of parameters, rest and value, L are actually co a compatible type unknown is not a, Yeah, it could actually be you know unknown for the most part. Hmm. Okay. So said rest can actually be unknown. Why if we don't want it to be unknown, right? 
Uh, it's worried I should I should just work. Except maybe we, we need to type what we are getting in here, right? So maybe we can actually. Oh, good. So in the Make API service, we could pass in a class. So we could just pass that class in for it not to be a problem. So I'm going to take this off and even just you know go to maybe make API call service. And whatever this is, I can just pass in here I response. This should just help us by default with you know what we are getting in the response data. So we don't need to, you know, we don't need to pass in anything here, right? So you can just return the promise of anything. For now, not really a problem. Not, not really a problem. So, but then we are passing in the I response. That means you know it takes in a kind of a structure. It takes in a you know response and then data and so on. Um, so it's still trying to check for the types and so on. So let's give it a couple of seconds. Boom. So when we infer now, right? When we like go for for this, we should be able to have. Hmm. Why is it unknown? That's weird. Oh, because it's not been returned. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, so this is actually what has been returned, though, <laughs> right? So it's going to return that, but uh, we don't want to pass it in, all right? So it is something I was looking forward to, to be honest. Okay, so now let's check our response. It's loading good okay we know that i response is always a global i response nice i will have any problem so return null all right so return this or null right the cases where we have like null values okay so let's go again and override this we have i response or not okay so yeah there we go and then we save all of our in, um before input okay so when we mount So when we mount, so when we mount this component, we are going to check if we have a value. We are going to check if we basically like have a value in the local store, right? So if we do, we are going to return those value. But if we don't, we are going to fetch. You know, we're going to like you know just allow it to the creation and stuff. So async function fetch and we do all of those. So what we're going to do now is we want to check for the billing information, right? We're going to check for the billing information and this is going to be a state. We're going to make all of these default values state. Okay, so we're going to have a state that will be responsible for managing all of this right so we're going to create a state okay uh, we just call it form data uh no i need something that is much more for me cubes Okay, lost track of the copy. Let's undo real quick and copy Ctrl Y to the very end, paste it in there. And this is going to be from a So that will be our default values. Okay, so we are going to be able to set from imputes to anything that we want, right? So let's say if we mount, we want to set from impute to all of this we just put some random value we're just checking if it's going to work we just pull it there put this here all right so let's let's check this oops let's check this out let's refresh this okay um intermediate value is not like terrible oh i see Let's see why that is. 
Oh, definitely. So this should be on the, the use state. Yeah, I think I missed the route. And close the route. So yeah, so I'm now use this forming piece of sequently to do whatever we want, right? So yeah, let's refresh that, refresh it. Okay. So when we mount, we are not setting so that means it's not working. Okay, so let's refresh it again. Somehow it doesn't work. So let's see why that is going on like that. Okay, oh okay, okay, okay. So set from input. Mm, I see. So this one is not like setting it like on the fly. Yeah, it doesn't set it on the fly. Okay, so now I figured it out. I just did a very small word search. And the first result I saw was using the, it has a set value. So we could use that to basically like set all the values that we need, right? So I think the same thing here. So yeah, so what, that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be using the set value to basically set the value, right? So the form we already declared basically has, you know, an attribute set value. I can use that to set all of the value individually. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to try to get the value first from here. So if there's actually billing information, if billing a four, right, if it's not empty, we're going to do this. We're just going to set all the values to it. So first name is going to be billing info dot first name, right? Just like that, right? So we'll do the rest like that. So this will be for the last name. So you can just copy and paste, right? Save us time. All right, so we have the company. We'll do the same thing for company. Then we have the street. Do the same thing for the street. We have the same thing for the town. Do the same for town. And then we have the province. Do the same thing for the province. Then we have the zip. So let's set up the zip. And then we have the phone right there. So the very next thing that we are having is the email, right? So we have the email and obviously we have additional information so these are everything that is needed to be able to you know update the entire billing information so we're just going to refresh this all right so we're refreshing and so we're not seeing anything so that's as weird okay so let's see if we have seen anything like Billing information. Okay, so let's first. Okay, so it's null, it's just null here. So that means we've not really set it as a state. Uh, we've not set it as a state before now. Okay, so let's see, set billing info. Alright, so let's create a new one. And obviously set that as part of state. So set billing info. Boom, okay, so we've saved this one and go to our application. You can see this is a billing item, right? So we'll save all of this as part of state. So let's refresh it. Okay, so we refreshed. Unfortunately, we are not getting anything. And that is a source of worry. So, but then we have it here, billing item. Okay, so we have billing info. Hmm. Okay, but somehow we can't fetch it, but we can set it this way. Use atom value billing atom. Somehow the value is null. Now that's a source of worry. Is the value not okay? So let's see. 
Okay, set billing info. What well, should it be? It should be a very good side to this. Okay, so now we see all the values, right? So we see all the values, but when we mount, we don't see anything. This is actually on line 34, 37, and so on. The 3, uh, 34. Okay, so we see all the value here. Okay, yes. Okay, so yeah, that's true. So whenever this changes, we want to be able to you know update the information, right? So we can pass that to the hook and obviously just refresh it and refresh it. We hope we're not having too many renders though. Boom, there we go. So we can see we're not having renders, but the only thing that does not work well is the country thing. Right, so we need a way to be able to see what we are. Oh, we are not sending the right country. We are sending the uh, what they call local government. So let's send the entire country name. Right, so that would be better. So now let's look for where we are. You know, managing a country. Okay, country, country, country. There we go. So feed the value. Okay, so value is equal to hmm, country dot name, obviously. So this should fix it. So we are saving this, uh, you know, this name to the actual DB, right? So if I select a country now, and one other thing I'm going to do is that when we have a bill information already, we don't want to create a new one, right? So we can do this here, which is very efficient. And we can just call this. Fetch, fetch existing. Well, just the fetch billing information. Okay, can call this fetch billing information. And one other thing that we will do is that we're going to come in here, and when we want to submit, right? So if billing information, we are going to do something very similar but different so we're going to paste this here and else we're going to create so that means if we want to if we already have a bill information we just want to update it as we want to create it right so we don't have the put equivalent of this but we can go to our route route is actually under the source app api and we have a route so we're going to just do all of this, but we're going to create a put request, right? So here we can just call it put, and we're just going to validate the same way you know we did before, right? And one of the things that we will be taking in is obviously uh, you know a parameter, right? So we need a way to be able to get the um, the billing ID, right? So if we're putting here. So we could, you know, just pass in the billing ID alongside it. So um, we're going to do const. Let's do params. Okay. So we we'll do request dot params. Okay. So let's let's try this out, right? I'm I'm not really sure, but let's see if that works. So we're going to pass in the params, and this params is going to obviously house the. Um, Going to house the billing ID. ID. Alright, so we can come in here and we do billing ID is equal to params dot billing ID. Okay, so what we want to do this. So updated in the first part we just do created so we can distinguish better instead of save billing info we have to do create billing info so that way we you know we know what we're doing okay so we have update billing information right so we're going to go to where we are having this 
and we are going to just try to create an object for it. So we have the update building information. So we have the input, and then we have the building ID this is going to be a string. Right, so we're going to have the object, and yeah, so the way the update works is we can actually put in the things that we want to update and then we want to like you know pass in other things as well right so what we're going to do now is you're going to just say um uh, okay so we're going to fetch one though so we we'll just return the value of the fetch one so we'll have update one okay so let's over that so update one takes in the filter, takes in the filter, and then takes in the input. So the filter is what we're actually updating is going to have ID or billing ID, and you're going to have the input, right? So we're not just going to update billing because most many a time billing will not contain the actual billing model, right? So um, we need to be able to like return one and just zero. So yeah, so we can just do the update right here. We can specify our billing is equal to our width. Billing dot find one. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so to find we used to have find by PK or find by the nice. So here we'll just pass in the Billing ID. So yeah, so just from here, just return all the billing as that's good enough. So we overwrite again one more time. We need the filter. Sorry. So over over there, and we need the filter. We need what we are actually updating. All right. So that should work on a normal scenario. And maybe we are not calling the params. We just do request the params. Yeah, I hope that works. Okay, so yeah, so that might not really be coming in as expected. Um, but yeah, well for the most part, it should just be straightforward. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to investigate quickly. I will pass in params to inner server action and we'll be right back. Okay, so I think we are back. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, to, so what I've done, um, just to recap, is I've created a two layer thing. Um, for this and the way that works is if we already have a billing information we just want to update it right so to update it it's very easy so now in the body i'm passing in the billing id to it right so so we subsequently use this billing id to update it and the message we're going to get is going to be different from what we get in post right so i'll go to the route real quick and in the put, you can see we are having the message billing information updated successfully. If we are creating, we have billing information created successfully, right? So um, as I was showing you before, we have the billing ID there. We have the uh, data, and then we have the billing ID. So if you go back to where we are having this, we have the billing ID, and then we have the data, right? So this is the same thing as for those that you know that are confused. This is something as this, right? So we have the data. Then we have the billing ID. So since both are actually the same, it's going to leave it as just one. Right. So yeah, so this will actually enable you to perform this updation. Right. Um updation. Yeah. So if you don't have any billing information in your local storage, it's going to create it. Right now, I've actually deleted a kind of uh, what's it called? I've deleted the item from the local storage. We don't have anything in the local storage now. If I refresh, so everything is just empty. Right, so I'm just going to populate this real quick. Let's also populate that real quick. Then we have all of this. And then I'm just going to save billing information. Meanwhile, not what you see here at the bottom. So billing information created successfully. So we are creating. Right, so now I've actually dropped all the tables. And now we have one new entry. So this is it, you know. So now what we're going to do is to refill this. This was Raymond Baker before. Um, let's do this again. We have Ohms Davis, 
right so we have a different country armenia and so on so let's save this we have bill information updated successfully right so go to our db and refresh this let's refresh this one you can see we have um we have raymond baker i think that's the old one really oh raymond baker hmm okay okay so obviously the update did not succeed because the information we had before let's just change this to locking and save it oh it's not saving it's obviously not saving okay i get it all right so let's refresh this part we have the billing item we have the name not changing as well good so let's fix it there's actually a reason why that is happening so in our puts we are passing in the data and then we are passing in the billing id then whatever we are getting will save to the um to the response right so let's go to our route we have our put there right here and in here we are doing update billing information we're supposed to be getting the billing back right so we are going to go in here so this is the billing id that we are expecting oh we have the input so we did not pass in the billing id so billing id as a string so this billing id is what we will use subsequently oh sorry about that that's supposed to be created it's supposed to be update billing info oh it was pointing to a wrong thing okay so let's go back to the routes okay update billing information so i'm going to clear out all of this right so we'll track it better let's open up update billing info of the billing info right there good we have the id billing id we have the impute could it be because of the fact that could it be because of the id we are using here to be honest okay so let's see if we're able to get a response right let's put a little console here so track what we are getting it successful or not okay so let's Okay, yeah, so let's try this out again and save. So the seventh thing, boom, okay, we basically updated one. We have modified count one, good. So now let's see what we've done. Okay, so let's do lucky here and save. Lucky, okay, good. Let's see if that's actually reflecting in our DB. Boom, it's actually reflecting. So you can see lucky there. It's updated successfully. So I'm just going to update it one more time. Update with this new country, Guinea-Bissau, with different name and so on. So if I refresh this, we are going to be having the up-to-date information, right? Nice, nice. Okay, so I think with that, we've been able to, you know, work more on the, on the billing side of things. And I normally like to display loaders, like loading screen and so on, right? So um, I basically added this today because, you know, Going forward, we are going to be checking out, and this is going to be majorly part of the next tutorial. So we are going to be integrating with Stripe and processing our payment in real time, right? So we're going to be using the Stripe Node SDK to be able to you know process payment and so on, and everything is going to be well linked. And I think that's going to be the wrap up for this particular application, honestly. And then I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far, right? So we've been. We've been able to touch base on quite a couple of things and um, yeah so before we round off i'm going to add a preloader and and also i'm going to add when you're moving from one page to another there should be some sort of loading indicator so we can achieve that by using the n progress okay something like that um yeah so we're going to use this library so we're going to install this real quick and okay so we're going to install that so what we're going to do now is we're going to just duplicate this window and paste that in there. Let's copy again, copy, and we'll go to the new window and we'll paste it in there. So we're going to install this package. And also we've used this package before in time parts in some of our projects, right? Maybe I'll just try to open up any of this project we've, we've worked on. So um, it's easy. So I think we've used it in not sure in the right app 2fa security app let's check that out okay so we have source 
we have the component, maybe the common component. What's the indicator? Let's try that one out. Oh, there we go. So we have it. We've used it here. So we're going to just create this file inside of the uh, what's it called? I'm going to call, create this inside of the common folder, and we're going to just call it loading indicator. No, it doesn't matter. So source components common. We're going to create a new file, and we're just going to see a loading indicator that csx. So we'll paste all of those there. And it's a client component, by the way, and we just do all of that. So this is the package we just installed. And good for us for the loading indicator. So the other part we need to use is, is we need to be able to use it within the um, within the app itself, right? The, the router. So we go to app, and we have a layout, the CSX. And this layout, we, we should be able to use it here. Uh, but for some weird reason, we are not using that. Let's see if we're using it in a separate place. Um... We have the page. Uh, okay, so let's check off. Okay, layout. Okay, so we're using it here somehow, right? So whether we're using our toaster, we just we use it there. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Um, so let's see where we are using our toaster. Okay, so we're using the toaster around here in this layout. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, we need to put it at the top, plug the indicator. So let's import that and make sure that all of these are, you know, one step inside, inside, right? So, so with that, we are going to try to refresh. <coughs> okay, so let's go. It's not working. Okay, that's working. So you can see right there. So we are easily moving from one page to another. Let's go back and see. Let's go there. So you cannot choose the color we want to use, right? So the primary color for this is actually this color. So we can actually just get our primary color from the Tailwind config, right? Tailwind config. And in there, we're going to just go to primary. So this is it. So we're going to use the same color in our loader indicator and we'll just paste it here so that will be the color we'll be using so that makes it uh, blend in more let's refresh it okay so let's go to checkout okay so you can see there are some links that does not really that doesn't really like go directly as expected that's because we're not using the actual thing right so this works because you're routing in page uh, right, we, we actually want the checkout to work as well. So when I click on check, I should be able to see that loading indicator. So now let's see where we're having our checkout. And we're going to make some few adjustments to it. It's very basic. And let's do checkout. Okay, oops. Let's move that. And when we are having our checkout test, so this router you are having now, we're not going to be using the router from Nest Navigation. We're going to be using the use router from End Progress Bar. So we'll take that out and whenever we're using the, the use router so when we import now we're going to see end progress bar. so this is what we're interested in so that one should be able to route us you know thereby having that indicator as well so yeah so this one should solve the problem uh, for the most part so when we refresh this and we'll click on this and when we'll check out the minute i click on this Boom, we can actually see the indicator right there. Nice. Right, so let's refresh this. Okay, so let's go again and check out. We're already there, so let's go to home. You can see we have our loading on the on the top right as well. We can choose to disable if you want, but I'll keep it. it looks good. So you can click on check out. Boom, we're having that kind of behavior. So when I click on check out, I want to close out this um, well. Not really a problem or we'll worry about it in the next tutorial so i think we've been able to work on quite a couple of things so let's select a country here okay so the country selected is guinea bissau um why is it not selected so let's fix this issue and yeah so let's go to where we're having country
Okay, so we're going to go to where we are having country real quick. Now, Ryan, where, where are you? Where are you, you, you? Okay, wherever we are having building this is right? So we should be able to see. We should be able to have it there. Okay, so, um, yes. So now, we're using the country here. Okay, so we have field or change, put the value there, and so on. So countries, right? So if we set a country, we want to be able to maybe we render this so that it has up to date information for some reason. Let's see if we can pass a key here. Yeah, we can. So we're going to pass a render country field. So a refresh key. Alright, so we have the render country, and what I'm going to do is we're not going to use the country, it's just like refresh country because we don't get that information quite in handy, so it's kind of you know. Um, so we need a way to be able to refresh this. I hope it works, but, but let's try it out. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here somewhere and we're going to just do create a new state. So refresh country, we're going to do set fresh country. We're going to have zero and set refresh country is just going to be you know whatever we do, whatever we do, right? So if we have all of this information, we're setting state and doing all of this, we just set fresh country for a math on the random. Okay, so here we can now use this as a key. Right, so we hope this key will actually make this country feel to the render, thereby giving us the up to date information. All right, so let's check it out. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's refresh it. Okay. Let's save that. What is our country? Refresh it. Hmm, we still have the problem. It doesn't do much. It doesn't do much. That's a source, big source of worry. Okay, because anything here is what we are using to update. Oops, we're not setting the country by any means. Oh, that's, that's a bad one. <laughs> that's definitely a bad one. So yeah, let's undo. And we're not setting country, so we have to set country. Country is supposed to be immediately after component. So CC, that, I think that's why I messed it up. So let's check this out. And hopefully that should be fixed now. Okay, let's remove the refresh key. Okay, let's remove that. Not needed. Okay. Hmm. Still the same thing. Still the same. This should just work already, you know. Hmm. So we have the country right here. Or should the country be a separate state? No, it's part of the form field.
shouldn't be. Okay, this is something I would do. So the country that we selected here is Albania. So let's see that we have a country Albania, for example. Albania showed up there. Okay, as a default value. Hmm. No reason for it not to work. <laughs> it should just work already. Right, so we are setting it here and Loading, 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 and no data. Hmm. So let's rephrase that. Okay. So when the country changes. Uh, whatever that is. Hmm. It's not the select field itself. It's just weird. Okay, so that actually was the you know was the solution to it. Basically, added a key. Um, I think one of the mistakes I made earlier was the fact that the country here was absent. I had to include it and added a refresh key. This refresh key, whenever I have the updated information of the of the country, I just set it to a random value, and this should you know make this part of the um, part of the thing to render. So this field will render with the correct value. So if for example I click on that and maybe I choose choose one country, um, Honduras for example, and I save my building information, and that should save in a minute right so it's already saved so i'm just going to refresh this page and what i should say by default should be Honduras, so i can see my country still coming in as expected boom i think with that we've been able to come to the end of this session and then um, obviously in the next session like i said we'll be looking more into you know processing payment and doing the actual dirty work